you been? It's been a little while, hasn't it? Do you like my bus? It's not bad, huh? <laughs> it's not my bus. If you uh, listen to the bird sounds that are generally surrounding us in, in, in our meetings, you might notice that these ones are a little different. We're in a little patch of bushland that's not been touched for a while, is, as you can probably tell. This is the um, I might call it pristine because it's not pristine. We hear the hum of the traffic. There's a highway about one and a half kilometres over that way. There's also a river right in front of us here, maybe a hundred metres that way. And so the sounds that occur, you know, you know how it is on water. You can hear someone on a boat having a conversation and they might be 200 metres away but it sounds like they're about 20 metres away because the sound just skips over the water. So we've got that, there is, there are houses over the other side of the river. It's a fairly wide river though, I'd say it's about 300, 200 metres wide maybe at this point. mention what river it was? I didn't, did I? It's the Tamar River. Yeah, you got it. We're not in, we're not in South West Australia this time. I don't know how you made it over here at the same time I did, but it's really cool. We, uh, that we got to meet up here. Um, yeah, we're in Tasmania. Not far from Launceston. So I was really keen to meet you here so we could listen to the different kinds of birds. I know almost none of them. Your guess is almost as good as mine when it comes to identification. It's really foggy this morning. There was an aurora last night, the aurora australis. Southern lights. Yeah, we, yeah, we get southern lights. Just like the northern hemisphere gets northern lights. You know, it's to do with the magnetic poles of the Earth. So it's, uh, it happens at the top and the bottom. Now we're, we're, we're at a, a much higher um, latitude. So we don't get them quite as, quite as spectacular as the Northern Hemisphere. You know, the Northern Hemisphere has them swirling around in the sky. We just tend to get the columns. Um, but there was a small aurora last night, but 
as is quite often the case when there's an aurora there's also clouds I don't know how they're related but they seem to be because they quite often occur at the same time but now it's super foggy so I can't even see the, the river 200 meters 100 meters away got bush hens here. I think I can hear one over there. I know that because I went for a walk yesterday uh, in the wetlands off the Tamar and I saw a lot of bush hens. Really my best hope of identification of birds is to hopefully see one. I always remain very visually elusive. I love that one. Something like that. almost like a whip bird. story the story of this bus I was brought here by the owners the previous owners of this property as a uh, as a business idea to rent out Airbnbs to um, so you could stay in the bus in the bush a la Christopher McCandless, I suppose. It's pretty raw. It's pretty raw in there. It's pretty Spartan. I don't think people were really looking for that experience. Um, he had a wooden a wooden bench and a sleeping bag and I think that's what the previous owners were trying to replicate and as it turns out people don't like that really when they pay for accommodation in the forest weird so um, the, the reviews online were not great and I suppose it just petered out to nothing but the bus that he dragged here that they dragged here remained and here it sits make a nice little motorhome for two and I think if they actually decked the bus out a bit 
You gotta put some plush interior into it and a nice bed. It probably would have been a good idea. It's, it's got power and water hooked up to it. So they could have had a heater and and stuff but anyway that didn't work and as you can see it's been left here to rot this picture birds with little little guns in their hands and every morning it's a each each bird each bird's gun makes a different kind of noise they're shooting at each other I don't know why I picture this it's a little comic comedy sketch that runs in my head whenever I hear birds every morning it's just a, a little war Especially with birds like the <clears throat> like the wattle bird. These birds have a different kind of call that doesn't sound quite so aggressive. They're very melodic, the birds here. What do you think of when you listen to birds? Hmm. I've got to have a drink. The wind is, uh, sorry, the, the fog is so thick here. Even up in the in the gum trees, just up there, it's you can already see the tops of them graying off. Love the wattle trees; they're out in bloom right now, nice and yellow.
Okay. It's actually a yeah, uh, there's a bit of they put a nice big piece of log that's cut from a tree in there for a bedside table. I'd have to rescue that. But yeah, I can imagine it would have got pretty cold in there. And the other the other significant creature of this area that comes out and we won't see him this morning because they come out at dusk only and feed during the night they're, they're a nocturnal marsupial um, called a, very cutely called a paddy melon they're a sit up, stand about this tall they're a um, a very small kangaroo, basically. I don't know if they're directly related to a kangaroo, but um, they probably are. And these small, furry, cute, but very timid kangaroos, dark brown fur. They're called paddy melons for some reason. Maybe I should have looked that up for you so I could explain to you why they're called paddy melons. I keep thinking the sun is just cracking over the horizon, but it's just the brightness of the wattle the wattle tree flowers. The sun would be coming over the horizon pretty much now, but because it's so foggy, it won't break through. Go through a walk for a walk through this section of the bushland down to the river though. That's where the paddy melons sleep during the day, hide. So you might see one down there. I did yesterday, they're, they're so fast. But I did catch a glimpse of one very heavy on their feet when they feel threatened and uh, they can they can hop quite, quite softly but if they feel threatened they do this thing where they like a rabbit does where they kick the floor dunk, dunk. Um, and so when you're walking through the bush and they feel threatened and they need to get away They'll make that sound so you actually know it's them. Silly, really. I mean, they're trying to evade you. But because they feel threatened, they, they're very heavy on their feet. Doom, 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 doom.
the traffic from over there and that dog I can hear barking across the river. It's very, it's quite tranquil here. I mean, we are only 15 minutes, I think a 15 minute drive from a small, a big town, shall we call it, a big town in Launceston. So I shouldn't be upset or surprised that it's, that I can hear the traffic in distant suburbia. But you still get your own little piece of nature, even this close to a significant hub. So it's nice. You can have a little bit of both worlds, you know. If you were to live here, I mean, if you own property here. Didn't give us his full call, but there was our friend the kookaburra. I was hoping you got to hear him. Him, her. I don't know. see them, so I can't tell you what they might be. But obviously we are near a river so there is an abundance of water bird life. They don't nest here though, they nest further that way. down the river. It's kind of southwest really, or south southwest that way. That's where I went for that wetlands walk. It's only a few kilometers, two or three kilometers down the river that way. There's a huge range of ducks and various water birds.
could sit here all day and listen to this. I'm going for a bit of a walk soon to uh, a uh, to a gorge in Launceston. It's not out in the wilderness anywhere. It's a touristy kind of walk while I'm here, um, but it's a it's a pretty significant gorge. I think they do bungee jumping there. So that'll be really good, be interesting. Good exercise, you gotta walk a little bit every so often. Or oh, I'd say every day, because I don't like walking. Unless it's a very interesting place. Which this gorge should be. myself a patty melon for breakfast. Mm. <laughs> it was, it was good seeing you here. Thanks for meeting me. It's really cool. Um, what, what do you reckon? I'm, I'm going to, I'm not staying in Tasmania long, I actually leave today, but um, I'm going to Victoria next. Is that's usually a territorial call that they do, and uh, I think some foreigners who come here from countries with monkeys probably think that they're monkeys that they're, that they're hearing. But no, it's a little bird about this big. Mm. Yeah, they've just got big lungs. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to Victoria next, and um, well, I'll be staying in an, in suburbia, but I'll be there for a little while, a couple of weeks. So I think we should meet somewhere with some trees. In the morning, to get them up to catch the morning birds, maybe. See what I can think of. We should meet there, yeah? Yeah, cool. Alright. No stress if you can't, but if you can, good to see you. Alright, take care.